Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Sergey of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Autism and schizophrenia are complex neurological diseases created by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Today we are going to discuss surprising similarities between autism and schizophrenia and the role of the mutations in these diseases. The word schizophrenia translates roughly from the Greek as splitting the mind. It really describes that splitting of memory, thinking and personality and perception. Yes, it's not the same as split personality. No, not at all. Um, and, if and you know, it's well known. And in the early 20s, doctors observed that individuals with schizophrenia also tended to die younger, and they seemed less physically healthy than, than other psychiatric patients. Schizophrenia patients, in fact, suffer from heart, lung, and metabolic diseases at a disproportionate rate and at very young ages. They die 15 to 25 years earlier, on average, than healthy individuals. They also tend to be heavy smokers. Is that part of it? In fact, it is. In the United States, 80% or more of people with schizophrenia smoke. Nicotine actually serves as agonist of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. This can presumably relieve cognitive impairments associated with schizophrenia, but the actual mechanism is still unknown. There is also some risk of drug abuse and suicide involved with those patients. That's really sad, and the effect of uh, psychotics were developed in the 50s, but the true causes of schizophrenia are only now becoming apparent, in large part due to next-gen sequencing. This paper by Fromer et al. is a good example. They describe the influence of de novo mutations in schizophrenia on synaptic networks. The authors show that small de novo mutations that affect just one or two nucleotides disrupt the whole normal function of proteins that are responsible for reception of a signal between neurons. It's, it's like a bad connection, right? It is. Uh, in fact, many of these mutations are not inherited, but are acquired as a result of maternal viral infections, uh, exposure to heavy metals, impaired gut microbiome, and other environmental factors. Stephen Hyman gives a really nice perspective on this in his recent outlook in Nature. The risk of schizophrenia involves multiple genes, varies between individuals, and overlaps with the risk of other disorders. Just how complex it can get. Yeah, you wonder about that, right? Uh, it's interesting that some of the mutated genes they found in schizophrenia also found um, the same as those mutated in autism and uh, intellectual disability. There are actually a lot of similarities between autism and schizophrenia. In both diseases, sufferers often experience anxiety, sleeping and immune disorders, as well as communication problems and early mortality risks. Yeah, did you know that one in 68 children in the U.S. Uh, is autistic and that the number is actually rapidly growing? This actually might be partially due to improving diagnostics. Improved diagnostics can lead to early diagnosis, better control of the condition and longer lifespans. Yeah, and exome sequencing uh, has been really good at diagnosing um, these diseases and it looks quite promising because it allows the systematic scans of the genes with de novo mutations even at a single base pair resolution. Actually, many of those loci are located uh, in non-coding parts of the genome. Yeah, I thought you would mention that. Um, but fortunately, whole genome sequencing, of course, can find mutations wherever they are and ultimately this is where you hope the sequencing would be going. Uh, the real challenge with these complex diseases, though, is that they are really truly spectrum disorders and with a really wide range of symptoms and severity. Former et al. speculate that with the advent of fine genomic analysis, medical decisions will be primarily based on the results of molecular diagnostics rather than on traditional symptomatic profiles, which might be quite inaccurate and overlap between different diseases. That's true, and, and that's really where the, the greatest challenge will ultimately become the greatest benefit, because imagine if it was possible to diagnose these, these diseases early and objectively. Just think of how dramatically it could improve the quality of life for these individuals. That's so true, and it is remarkable to see how fast this field is progressing. And there's so much to talk about, but unfortunately we are out of time today. Thank you for joining us today, and please feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, concerns, or any feedback. We are always glad to hear from you. Thank you, and have a great day.